Secure Boot? Really? Are you trying to update a fairly new system to Windows 11, but the installer says that your system doesn't support Secure Boot? Well, today I'm going to show you how to fix that problem. Stay tuned. Yeah, we're going to make quick work of this. Well, I don't keep it a secret that I'm a little irritated with Microsoft's hardware requirements. To be honest with you, I think they're arbitrary and ridiculous. In fact, I think the only reason they're doing it is to increase sales for third-party vendors like Dell and HP. However, we still have to play by Microsoft's rules at this point. That is, until there are better solutions otherwise. Now, when it comes to Secure Boot, there are a lot of ways to get around this need. In fact, there's really easy ways to get around this. But if you don't have to get around it, if you can actually just enable Secure Boot on your system, then there's really no reason to use the workarounds. Just enable Secure Boot. Today, I'm gonna show you how you can enable Secure Boot if it happens to be disabled on your system. You know, there's a lot of reasons why this could be the case. For instance, I've showed in the past how to upgrade a computer from simply removing the drive from one computer and putting it into another in order to detect new hardware. And it actually works pretty good. It works great with Windows 10. It's actually the first operating system that I've actually had confidence in doing that with because I've had such a good success rate with it. However, if I pull a hard drive out of a Windows 7 system and put it into a Windows 10 system, then ultimately that drive may have Windows 10 on it, but it's not gonna have Secure Boot enabled. It's gonna be using the old master boot record system. And maybe that was the way you set it up originally. There's all kinds of different reasons why you could have a UEFI system running a master boot record primary hard drive. But whatever the reason is, there's a really easy way to fix this problem. And I'm gonna show you how to do that today. The first thing that we wanna do before we try to convert the disk is to make sure if we actually have to convert the disk. So to do that, it's really simple. Let me show you how. Okay, so what you're gonna need to do in order to determine if your problem is, in fact, that you're running a system that doesn't have a GPT partition table is go ahead and right click on the start menu and click on disk management. And then from here, you wanna go down and find your primary disk, which is disk zero here, and we're gonna right click and hit properties. And then from properties, we wanna click on the volumes tab. And then from here, as you can see, the partition style is master boot record. So if you're running a master boot record primary disk, then your system isn't gonna support secure boot and you're gonna get this error when you try to install Windows 11. However, it's really easy to fix. Today, I'm gonna to show you two different ways to convert an old legacy MBR disk to a GPT partition so you can run secure boot. So without further ado, let's get to a system and I'll actually show you how to do it. Okay, so if you're watching this video, then you've probably seen this error message here saying your PC must support secure boot in order to install Windows 11. Well, you know, this system, it definitely supports secure boot, but because I upgraded this computer from a system that actually didn't support secure boot, you remember this is the e-waste gaming PC. So we started out with an older motherboard that didn't support the GPT partition table. So unfortunately, because of that, we're stuck in the situation we're in now, but it's really easy to fix. So the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and close this. The first way I'm gonna show you how to do this is through an offline conversion. And this is the best way to do it. It's really easy, let me show you. you. Go ahead and click the start button and go ahead and click on settings. And then from settings, you wanna scroll down to update and security. And then from here, you wanna scroll all the way down to your recovery right here. So go ahead and click on recovery. And then you wanna click on advanced startup. So go ahead and push restart now for advanced startup. And then once you're in the advanced startup menu right here, we wanna go ahead and click on troubleshoot and then go to advanced options. And then we wanna pick command prompt. So it's gonna take a minute for the system to reboot and get to the command prompt. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip ahead until it's actually booted to the command prompt and I'll show you what to do next. 
So the first thing that we're going to want to do is go ahead and click on the computer's username right here. And once you click on that, it's going to ask you for the password here. And depending on what your password is, go ahead and enter that now. On mine, I have no password, so I'm just going to go ahead and hit continue. And then from this point, it should give us the command prompt. Now comes the part where we actually convert this disk. And like I said, it's really easy. Essentially, all we're going to do is run two commands. The first command is going to be MBR to GPT. Then you want to do the forward slash and type in validate. Then you want to do another forward slash and you want to type in disk colon zero. The reason why I specified disk zero in this command is because I have two drives in the system. So for me, it's a good idea to tell the command specifically which drive I want to run the command on. However, it may not be necessary in your specific application, but it doesn't hurt. If you only have a single drive and you enter in disk zero, it's going to operate exactly the same. So I would recommend specifying the specific disk that you want to run the command on while you're running the command. So now let's move on to the next step. So once you have this typed in, go ahead and hit enter and it's going to go through and validate the disk. Now at this point, if you get any errors at all, it might be a good idea to actually find out what's causing those errors, but you can actually move on if it says the validation was successful. So the next command that we're going to type in is going to be MBR to GPT. And then instead of validate, this time we're going to tell it to convert. And then for convert, we want to also do the forward slash and tell it which disk. So it's going to be disk zero. And then go ahead and hit enter. So at this point, it's actually going to convert the partition to GPT. It's going to take it a minute to do this. But once it's finished, you should be able to reboot your computer. Let me show you how to do that. All right, so once it finished, there were some errors, but I wouldn't really worry about these too much. This is the same error it gives me each time, and you know, it works fine. As long as it says the conversion completed successfully, then you're okay. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and hit exit, and then by hitting exit, you're actually gonna go back to your main screen in recovery here. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and hit turn off PC. So now that the computer is completely turned off, all you should have to do is start it back up again, and it should boot into Windows like normal. However, it may not. Let me show you. So we're going to go ahead and hit power here and we're going to see if it boots up. I bet you I get an error and there's a reason why and I'll show you once we get to that point. So as you can see here, it says that I don't have a proper boot disk. And the reason why is because my system was set up to boot to the MBR drive. What you may have to do is go into your BIOS and specify a specific drive to boot to. So you may have to change your boot order, but it's really easy to do. I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and I'll meet you back in Windows. Okay, so what we're gonna have to do is go down and right click on the start button here. And we wanna go to disk management. And then just like we did before, we want to go to our primary disk. We want to right click and hit properties. And from properties, we want to click on volumes. And here you can see we're running a GUID partition table. So, and that should be all it takes. You should be able to install Windows 11 at this point, but let's check the program and see if we get the same error. So from here, we're going to go ahead and close this stuff up right here. And we're going to go ahead and open the PC health check again. And from here, we're going to check now to see if our system supports Windows 11. And just like that, our system meets the system requirements. But now that I've done this, I'm going to show you an even easier way to do this conversion that doesn't even require you to reboot your system. And for that, I've actually imaged the original drive onto another SSD that we're going to use to do this whole process over again. But we're going to do it in a little bit easier of a way. So stay tuned. I've got to tear this thing apart and put this drive in. And I'll see you back in Windows. So this one here is going to be really easy. It doesn't require you to actually boot the system offline in order to make it happen. So to do this, all you want to do is go down, click on your start menu and type in CMD. And then from here, you want to go ahead and click on run as administrator. Then go ahead and hit OK. And then from here, you should have your command prompt ready to go. And then what we're going to want to do is type in the same command that we typed before. It's going to be MBR to GPT forward slash validate forward slash disk colon zero. But now we're going to want to add one more command to this. And what that's going to be is going to be forward slash allow full 
OS, and then go ahead and hit enter. And it says it completed successfully. It doesn't look like there's any problems with converting this disk over to GPT. So by adding the allow full OS switch to this command, it will actually allow you to run this command while Windows is currently running. Now, this isn't the best way to do it, but it should still work. So let's go ahead and run the command and see what happens. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is go ahead and type in MBR to GPT forward slash convert forward slash disk colon zero and forward slash allow full OS and go ahead and hit enter and it should start the conversion process. So now this process is gonna take a little while to complete. However, once it's done, at that point, you should be able to operate exactly like you did before. I would highly recommend once it's finished, go ahead and reboot the computer. You may actually have to go into the BIOS still and change your boot order. It depends on whether or not your hard drive can detect the new secure boot partition that you have on your system. But at this point, you should be able to install Windows 11 without any problems. That is, at least as long as your other hardware meets the requirements from Microsoft, which, you know, the requirements are kind of arbitrary. So, but good thing is, is I've actually heard from a few people that Microsoft is thinking about expanding those hardware requirements. So hopefully if you have an older system and it's not currently supported by Windows 11, hopefully it will be soon. But if it isn't, then hopefully the community will be able to do something about this in the future. So where we can have Windows 11 on these older systems. But in the meantime, I guess we're just gonna have to play by Microsoft's rules. But if this was helpful to you, then please like this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon so you can be notified of future videos I post a new video every week oh and hey before you go check out a couple of these videos have a great day